In this video, we will practice finding limits like this one. I'm not supposed to tell you guys this, but this is actually something called a derivative, which we will learn about in the next unit, which is at the heart of what makes calculus work. But let's learn how to find these limits now. Uh, so for this particular one, I don't see any radicals or anything, so uh, we're not going to multiply by the conjugate. So what am I going to do? Maybe we can simplify this part of the expression uh, just by multiplying it out. So let's rewrite this as uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of, and uh, h, x plus h squared is the same thing as x plus h times x plus h, and then we still have our minus x squared over there. So if we multiply this out, all right, I have the limit as h approaches 0 of, uh, if we multiply this out, this is going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then we still have the minus x squared on the end. So oftentimes what will happen is uh, something will cancel out. So can you notice that uh, we have this x squared term and then the negative x squared term. These are going to cancel each other out. So when we rewrite this, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, and uh, in the numerator, we have 2xh plus h squared over h. Now we're going to use a property that I call the a plus b over c rule. Uh, because this is the same as a over c plus b over c. So always watch out for this. You can split apart a sum into two different fractions when the denominator is a monomial. So uh, I'm going to do that right now. So this will become the limit as h approaches 0 of, I'm going to have 2xh over h plus h squared over h. Now in each fraction you can see that I have uh, a common factor, right? These h's are going to cancel each other out. Um, and we have common h's in the second term as well. There will be one h left over. So this is going to become the limit as h approaches 0 of and this is, I'm taking the limit of all of this. Maybe I'll put it in a nice bracket to show that it's all together. Um, once these h's cancel out, I have 2x plus, and this term will become h. Now it's time to do our direct substitution. And I usually like to write down the word direct sub to show exactly what I'm doing. And uh, this is the point at which we can stop writing the limit as h approaches 0. Make sure that every step before the direct substitution, you have to keep writing the limit as h approaches 0 over and over and over again. If you leave that off, even if you stick it in later, uh, you will lose points both on my tests and quizzes and with the college board when you take the AP exam. But anyway, if we let h equal 0, then uh, the expression becomes 2x plus 0, which of course is just 2x. So our limit is an expression in this case instead of just a number, but that's okay. The limit is 2x. Sometimes they will give you the limit with a generic function like f of x in it, and then off to the side, they tell you what f of x is. So you have to get comfortable with this. So uh, let's rewrite this. Limit as h approaches 0. But we're going to replace f with the actual function that we're given. So right here where it says uh, function f at x plus h, we're using the function f. So um, instead of writing 3x minus 2, I'm going to write 3 parentheses minus 2. 
All right, I'm actually going to need more space than this. So, so far I'm writing down this part right here. Now inside of the function we are to put x plus h. So I've left space for that right here. So I'm going to have uh, my x plus h right there. And then now it's time to write this part. So as I write uh, minus f of x, this is going to be minus and then f of x is 3x minus 2, that whole thing. Maybe I'll just leave it like that for a second. Um, I'm using parentheses to make sure that we remember to distribute this negative sign. So when I take away the parentheses, this minus 2 will become a plus 2. So be very careful of that. A common mistake is to leave off the parentheses and leave it as a negative 2. Meanwhile, in the denominator, we have h. So now we're just going to simplify and you know distribute, combine like terms, and see what happens. Probably something is going to cancel out. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of. So uh, I'm doing the distributive property right here. Uh, I think I'll just switch colors for a second. So this will be 3x plus 3h. And then I've got the minus 2 that I'm bringing down. And then here I'm distributing the minus sign like I discussed, and I will have negative 3x plus 2 all over h. So now we combine like terms. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, what do we have? Um, hmm, we have a positive 3x and a negative 3x right there. Those are going to cancel each other out. Also, we have a negative 2 and a positive 2 right there. These are going to cancel each other out as well. So, in fact, I feel silly for writing this giant fraction bar because so much of it canceled out. So, really, I'm just going to have um, 3h over h. So look what happens. Um, at this point we're left with the common factor of h in the numerator and the denominator. Um, so that's just going to uh, leave the 3. So I guess technically we will say uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of 3. But guess what? The limit of a constant is that constant. So uh, the actual limit is simply 3. Let's try another one like that. So I'm going to rewrite this. We have the limit as h approaches 0. Now we have uh, f at x plus h, where here's, here's function f over here. It is negative 6x plus 3. So I'm going to put negative 6 parentheses plus 3 to leave space to plug something in. And of course what I'm plugging in is the x plus h part. All right, Because we are supposed to do f at x plus h. So we're plugging x plus h into function f. So that's why I'm going to put x plus h right here. Um, then over here on the end, we're just going to have um, minus f of x. So we're going to have minus the actual function. So minus negative 6x plus 3. And this is all over h. So let's do the distributive property, combine like terms, and see what happens. So we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to distribute this negative 6. So this is going to give me um, negative 6x minus 6h. And then I've got that plus 3 that I'm bringing down. And then now I'm distributing this minus sign. Um, so this is going to become plus 6 
x minus 3 all over h. So the limit as h approaches 0, how much of this will cancel out? Let's see. We have a negative 6x and we have a positive 6x. Those are gone. We have a positive 3 and we have a negative 3. Those are gone. So that is leaving negative 6h over h. So of course those h's will cancel each other out. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 6. And the limit of a constant is that constant. So the limit is negative 6. Let's try another one. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, we've got um, f at x plus h again. And here is function f. Somehow we need to plug x plus h into this function. So I'm, instead of writing x squared, I'm going to put parentheses squared. Instead of writing negative 4x, I'm going to put negative 4 parentheses. All right, that leaves me space to substitute in the x plus h. So now I can put in my x plus h in both places. So this is f at x plus h. It's this function with x plus h plugged in here and here. But then there's a little bit more because on the very end, we need minus f of x. So we have to do minus um, the actual function, x squared minus 4x. Just be careful to put it in parentheses so you will do the distributive property and ultimately turn this into a positive 4x. All right, that is a common mistake. Meanwhile, in the denominator, we have h. So let's um, simplify this and see what cancels. On the next step, we have the limit as h approaches 0. All right, I feel like this is going to take a lot of space. x plus h um, is the same thing as x plus h times x plus h. OK. Um, I didn't want to bore you watching me uh, recopy that, so I did it off camera. Anyway, if I multiply x plus h times x plus h, that's going to give me x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Then if I distribute right here, I'm going to have minus 4x minus 4h. Then if I distribute here, I'm going to have minus x squared plus 4x. So let's recopy and look for how much will cancel. So the limit as h approaches 0. OK, we have x squared and we have a minus x squared. Those are going to cancel out. What else? We have a minus 4x and a plus 4x. Those are going to cancel out. That's all I can see that will cancel. So what we have left is 2xh plus h squared minus 4h all over h. OK, um, I'm noticing that we have a common factor of h throughout the numerator. So um, let's factor out that common factor. So this will be the same as the limit as h approaches 0 um, of h times 2x plus h minus 4. 
okay, all over h. In this form, it's easy to see that we have this common factor of h in the numerator and denominator, which will cancel out. So I'm running out of space before my next problem, so I think I'm going to do the rest of my work right here. I'm going to squeeze it in kind of in this space. All right, so these are gone. So now I have the limit as h approaches 0 of, and uh, it's just this trinomial that is left. Okay, I've got this 2x plus h minus 4. So now I can definitely do direct substitution. If I let h be 0, then this will be uh, 2x plus 0 minus 4. You know what? I like to say direct sub substitution whenever I'm doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that protocol. Direct sub. This is a good habit to get into um, for the College Board. If you write this down so everybody knows exactly what you're doing, you're guaranteed to get full credit for this uh, for this problem. Anyway, so uh, we will have 2x plus 0 minus 4, which of course is 2x minus 4. So that is the limit. Let's do one more of these. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, first comes f at x plus h. So we need to take function f and plug in x plus h. Well, function f is the square root of x. So instead of the square root of x, I'm going to put the square root, um, but inside I'm going to put x plus h. All right, so that is f at x plus h, is the square root of x plus h. Next, we do um, the minus f of x part. So we go minus, and f of x is just the square root of x. And then in the denominator, we just have the h. Well, this one has square roots in it. So in the past, we've simplified problems like this by uh, multiplying by the conjugate, the conjugate of the numerator. That's how we deal with square roots. So let's do that now. Let's multiply by the conjugate of this. Um, I haven't done this on this video, so let me just remind you when I'm saying conjugate, if I have a plus b, the conjugate would be a minus b. So if I have the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x, uh, the conjugate is going to be the same exact thing except with a plus instead of a minus. So I will have the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Um, this is only allowed if I do the same thing in the denominator. So also multiply by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x in the denominator. This way I'm really just multiplying by 1 and I'm not changing the value of the problem. So the beauty of multiplying by the conjugate is um, when you multiply a plus b times a minus b, you're always going to get a squared minus b squared as a result. The middle part cancels out. So that's what's about to happen now. We're going to get a squared minus b squared. Um, the a is uh, the, x, the square root of x plus h. That's the a. And the b is the square root of x part. So as we rewrite this, we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0. So a squared, 
if you square a radical, the radical goes away. So I'm going to end up with just x plus h. So I said we'd have a squared minus b squared. So we're definitely going to have a minus right now. And then b squared, we're going to uh, take that radical away again, and this will just be x. So this is a squared minus b squared. In the denominator, we've got all of this mess. So I'm still going to have h, and then I've got the square root of x plus h uh, plus the square root of x. I've got all of that. But watch and see if something will cancel out. So notice that we've got this x here and we've got a minus x here. That is important. Um, something is always going to cancel out on these problems. So we are left with the limit as h approaches 0. And in the numerator we just have h. And in the denominator we have h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Notice that we have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. These are going to cancel out. So this will become the limit as h approaches 0. Well, the h in the numerator is canceling out, but I still need something up here as a placeholder, so I'm going to have a 1. And then I'm going to have the square root of x plus h uh, plus the square root of x. Now, let's see if we can go ahead and do direct substitution. In fact, let me make a little box here for the rest of my work. And I'm going to write the word direct sub so everybody knows what's about to happen. And by the way, this is the first point at which I can stop writing the limit as h approaches 0. You have to keep writing that over and over again until you actually do the direct substitution. So if h becomes 0, then this expression will become 1 over... Uh, the square root of x plus 0 plus the square root of x. And this will be 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x. Uh, but this is equal to 1 over 2 times the square root of x because there's two of them. And that is it. This is the limit.